how this 3D printed part saved the quality of life, saved the arm of a patient on this episode of The Cool Parts Show. The Cool Part Show is brought to you by Carpenter Additive. The company's Athens, Alabama Emerging Technology Center is an end-to-end -end additive manufacturing production facility with everything from materials development through post-processing under one roof, ready to help you with your next metal 3D printing job. Check them out at carpenteradditive.com. Now, back to the show. I'm Pete. I'm Stephanie. We're with Additive Manufacturing.media, and this is The Cool Parts Show, our show all about amazing parts made with 3D printing. So Pete, let's jump right into it. What is the cool part that you've brought today? Yeah, so we've talked about customization before, the promise of additive manufacturing to make products that are tailored to the user. We've talked about customized implants before. This is an example of a real success. This is an identical copy of an implant that is in a patient right now. Wow, so that's really cool. We've never had a literal custom implant here in the studio before. Um, so what part of the body is that for? Yeah, this is a shoulder blade. This is a scapula. I don't know that I've ever seen a scapula implant before. Um, is that because they're not 3D printed or is this maybe not such a common surgery? Not such a common surgery. Scapula replacement is uncommon and as a result there's not really a standard implant solution and quite arguably it's maybe not even possible for there to be a standard solution because the scapula has to fit in the space defined by the, the mus muscle and tissue of the patient. It really has to take the exact form of the original bone. And it really, it took a team of people and companies to do this. There was the surgeon who chose that this would be the way to treat the, the patient in this case. There is the, the engineering firm that created this um, custom implant, specialist in custom implants. And then there's the company that did the additive manufacturing, that 3D printed this part. Okay, so this is an unusual implant. It's unique to the patient. It took this whole team of people working together. So I guess start at the beginning. You said the, the surgeon is the one who made the decision to go with this custom implant. Um, you know, what was, what was the diagnosis? What was he trying to accomplish? So the patient had primary malignancy of the scapula, meaning there's a lesion or tumor that had to be removed. And that's no trivial thing because the, your, your, your scapula actually does a lot more for you than you might imagine. This is probably the right place to bring in our surgeon. Uh, here is Dr. Joseph Benavinia. The scapula is, a, is an interesting, uh, interesting bone. Uh, it's, a, it's a flat bone, it's a thin bone and its primary function is to serve as the origin or the base of the major muscles around and working the shoulder. So as a bone in and of itself, it really doesn't uh, provide any type of direct weight bearing, but it does provide a, a, a large surface area for these muscles to originate from. This is what it looks like from the front. And here's the the joint again, we call the glenohumeral joint or the shoulder joint. The area of the scapula that is most critical is this upper area we call the supraspinatus fossa, we actually call it. And this is really the most critical muscle of the rotator cuff. And that allows us to elevate our shoulders. It allows us to uh, to work at shoulder level or do above head activities. And the nerve for that muscle goes right through this little area called the notch. And if that's affected with cancer, then, you know, patients would lose that and then lose their ability to elevate their, their arm. In, a, in some circumstances, uh, there, there is uh, no option for the patient with respect to the, the surgical alternative uh, except for amputation. And there are circumstances, unfortunately, that uh, you know, unless the patient has an amputation, there, there's no chance for any type of, we say, uh, definitive treatment or cure. 
in circumstances where there is an option, there's an option uh, as to um, a potentially more um, functional limb versus um, a less functional limb, the suspension arthroplasty only allows elbow and wrist function. It does not allow you to, to, to raise your shoulder and it, it, it does look much different. It's mu much more of a, um, a kind of a hollow, withered type of look to the shoulder. So it is possible to do this surgery without, without a replacement like this, and, uh, but the result is loss of motion around the shoulder. There is still elbow and hand motion, but, but in this case, um, the 3D printed implant allowed that shoulder motion, allowed, as we say, full quality of life, full range of motion. Yeah, so I think what I'm understanding clearer now is like this is not a case where there's a standard scapula design that maybe you could tweak or adjust for a specific patient. Um, the alternative is not to take an off-the-shelf implant and use that. The alternative is maybe to not replace the scapula at all. Yeah, so I want to focus on something you said. There's, there's no standard design. Um, in a case like this, the design is the patient's bone. Um, the, the scapula implant has to replicate that. And, and so they, they measure the patient's bone to get the geometry using CT scanning, computed tomography, and they, they turn to a specialist for that. Um, we I, I talked about the teamwork involved here. Um, the, the next member of the team, um, you know, Dr. Benavinia is kind of a special surgeon. He's sort of got an, an engineering bent. And and um, he worked with a small engineering firm where the engineers there kind of think like surgeons. The company is Orthotin and they specialize in custom implants. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about the company, Ortho Tin. Um, ortho makes sense, orthopedics, where's the tin come from? Right, right, tin. Uh, titanium nitride, which is the name of this coating, uh, the gold coating on the outside of this implant. Titanium nitride coating gets you to custom implants, and here's how. Um, your implant is gonna be in your body a long time. You're gonna rely on it. You don't want it to wear, so the implant needs a really hard surface. Usually, or, or frequently, cobalt chrome is used for implants. It's a very hard metal, but it's hard to work with. It's hard to machine. Orthotin makes a lot of custom implants through machining, cutting metal. Titanium is easier to work with. This implant was made from titanium. That's what the, the metal underneath this is. Titanium is easier to work with and adding the titanium nitride tin coating gets the hard surface, um, gets you that hard surface that you need. Okay, so you said that Orthotin specialty is applying this coating to machined implants. Yeah. And I'm looking at this and I don't see any of the like open lattice work um, or the rough surface that we've seen on 3D printed implants. This looks to me like something maybe you could machine. Is that something they considered for this? Something they considered and something you could machine, that's right. Um, so now it's time to bring in kind of one of the people who made that choice, what manufacturing process to use. Uh, you'll recognize the last name. Uh, I mentioned our, our surgeon has had a relationship with the company for a long time. And so here representing Orthotin, his son, an engineer, went to work for them. Here is Sam Benavinia. The, the organic form of the anatomic scapula would require uh, five axis machining. And this sort of complex CNC programming, it takes time. Uh, the fixtures are complex, specialty tools would be needed and machining times are excessively long because of the size differential between raw material and final part. So additive manufacturing was chosen because it offered a straightforward way to design and fabricate it and allowed us to deliver it in a timely manner. The scapula needed to be replaced, but the actually the, the bone on the scapula, the glenoid it's called, it's where the articulation between the humerus and the, the shoulder occurs. Mm -hmm. So it was healthy enough that the doctor didn't want to sacrifice it. So we were able, he was able to resect this, this portion of the anatomical scapula and actually put it inside 
that is something you cannot do with a standard device because the standard device is, is from the joint out. So you replace, you know, you replace the surface of the humerus or you replace the surface of the scapula, the glenoid, and then it goes out from there. And you don't have to, uh, you don't have to replace the joint itself if the joint is fine. Preserving this little glenoid, what that does is it preserves this capsule, which, which is around, which is around the joint. You can see this this area right here that we were looking at before, this, this tissue around it is a capsule. So if you can preserve that little glenoid, you can preserve this capsule, not the muscles, but just the soft tissue holding this joint in place. You can avoid all the potential complications that go with an artificial joint replacement, which primarily is, is dislocation. In saving that glenoid, and in, in turn saving the, the shoulder joint, it adds a whole nother level of complexity and design to the scapula replacement, which, which really was the, um, probably the, the biggest challenge in, the, in, this, in this situation. The glenoid was the tricky part. They didn't know if this would work. They, they went into the surgery and they had options ready to go. They would have done a full shoulder replacement if they had to. They weren't absolutely sure that they got this socket perfect, this interface perfect. Um, they had adapters ready to go in case it, it didn't fit perfectly, but it did. The, the CT measurement combined with the additive manufacturing, they replicated that shape perfectly, the shape of the interface, and, um, and, and the surgery went as planned, fortunately. Okay, so Dr. Benavinia is kind of the starting point, making the decision to pursue a custom implant. Orthotin designed and coded the implant, but who actually did the 3D printing? Yeah, we, so it's time now to, to bring in uh, the next company that was involved in this teamwork. So this is Amplify Additive, uh, Scarborough, Maine, a company specializing in metal additive manufacturing specifically for implants. So my name is Brian McLaughlin, uh, President and CEO of uh, Amplify Additive. Amplify Additive is a service company focused on leveraging additive manufacturing uh, for the design and manufacturing of uh, orthopedic implants. Uh, we are focused on leveraging electron beam melting technology. Okay, so that actually answers my next question as well. What was the process? So electron beam melting, um, something we've talked about before. Um, electron beam melting EBM is a powder bed fusion process. Um, it happens at really high temperatures. You preheat the whole bed first, um, and then you're using an electron beam to melt each layer of powder to build up your part. And it's something that's um, pretty common for metal uh, medical implants like this. Right, right. And I don't want to oversimplify. It's, it's a sophisticated process. But in this case, 3D printing this implant actually wasn't all that difficult. There were not significant design changes necessary to create this form. The design of this part uh, from Orthotin's perspective, um, really, you don't need a whole lot of modification when it comes to leveraging electron beam melting. You know, uh, that's one of the unique aspects of, of electron beam melting. There's really no distortion in your components. Um, because it's done under vacuum at elevated temperatures, there are no localized stresses being created. Um, there's no stress between the platform, which in laser systems, the platform tends to be the same material. We, we don't even need to connect the part to the platform. We can actually float the part above the platform. So when Ortho, Ortho Tin came to us, um, you know, we quickly explained to them that we should be able to print this in a matter of days. Um, and, and, it, and it so worked out that we were able to, when they get, got us the final design, we were able to put the prints on the platform, prepare it for a weekend build. So therefore the machine was running all weekend while we were hanging out with the family. So Amplify Additive was able to print this implant pretty quickly over the weekend, lights out essentially. Um, and that sort of ties back to what we were talking about earlier with why additive was chosen over machining, because the complexity of that geometry, um, you would have so many different setups. You would need somebody there at the machine to keep changing the way that the part was oriented. You would need fixturing. And with additive manufacturing, you don't have any of that tooling or any of that sort of manual uh, uh, work involved. 
That's right. Machining would have introduced a lot of lead time here. Conversely, the digital manufacturing process, the uh, additive manufacturing, uh, this 3D printing build that ran through the weekend, like Brian described, it was able to produce not just one of these implants, but multiple implants within the same build, no extra time. Um, so Amplify made three of them. Okay, so Amplify got the design, they had the implants made in a couple of days. What happened next? Coating also didn't take long, the titanium nitride coating. The lead time for all of the part making was actually very short, and my understanding is it's so short it actually proved to be not the bottleneck on this surgery. Actually scheduling time in the operating room was, was introduced the delay, and so the parts were actually made days before they were needed. Then the, then the surgery and the surgery went very well. Um, the, the patient um, uh, treated uh, full quality of life, full range of motion. Here is an x-ray of what that patient's shoulder looks like now. So this implant tells a pretty powerful story. Like not only did this patient recover from cancer, he got to keep his shoulder blade, keep the movement in his arm and his shoulder, um, keep his original shoulder joint and preserve the existing quality of life. Like this is a story about a medical treatment, but it's also a story about somebody's lifestyle and, and their you know, mental and physical well-being together. I guess the question that this leaves me with as we're coming to the end here is why aren't these kinds of custom implants more common? Why isn't this the go-to solution? Yeah, um, so I think there's some subtlety to that. Why, why um, like given what 3D printing enables, why aren't custom implants more common? Um, I think we're headed there, but it takes more than just the part making process. Uh, there's there's a, a, a standard product, a standard implant could be made within a standard manufacturing process, standard facility, but when you get into customization, it it, it, it requires a change in thinking, a change in workflow, a change in the whole way you think about how manufacturing happens. Because as we've seen, the, the surgeon has to be involved in the production process all through it. He's got to have a voice in there and he has to be guiding it. Let's bring in Dr. Benavinia one more time who will talk about how, how valuable that relationship is and that teamwork is. Orthotin happens to you know to be a company where and you know I've I've known uh, the the senior engineer for decades and we work directly and there's direct knowledge that that the the engineer has of not only the product but of the clinical problem that we deal with their engineers being being on site in a lot of these cases are able to, to gain valuable experience in the operating room as to you know the different nuances of, of making these implants. So that's always the concern of the surgeon is you know is is the does the engineer um, understand enough from what the surgeon is saying? I and mean, a lot of times we don't understand the terminology either. Um, and there's always that concern about a communication gap. Fortunately um, that's not a that that's not a a factor in the, in this circumstance. So that ties right back into what you were saying near the beginning. You know, a surgeon with the heart of an engineer, and some engineers with the hearts of surgeons. Yeah, and 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 we've seen how relatively easy the 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 literal part making manufacturing part of it is, and so maybe this is a picture, likely is a picture of the future of what more and more implants will be like. Uh, maybe we will see that surgeons increasingly have that kind of engineering bent as as part of their expertise, as part of the knowledge they employ to help patients because. Because, because the doctor who is able to interface with manufacturing in that way opens up the possibilities that, that additive manufacturing can bring to implants. Right, so the technology is there and now it's a matter of building those relationships and opening those channels of communication. Right. So I think I got this. So this is a 3D printed scapula implant. Um, it's custom made for the patient based on the patient's own anatomy. Um, it is 3D printed titanium made with electron beam melting coated with titanium nitride. 
Um, and it represents this really close collaboration between a lot of different parties. So Dr. Benavenia, the surgeon, um, Orthotin, the company that designed the implant, and then Amplify Additive, the additive manufacturing experts that actually 3D printed it. Um, and as a result of their efforts, um, they created this implant that allowed the patient to not only recover from cancer, but um, to retain the motion of um, his arm and shoulder and um, also preserve the original shoulder joint um, so that he could have the same quality of life after the surgery as before. Right, that'll do it. If, if you have a cool part you'd like to tell us about, something your team of experts is working to make real, we want to hear about it. We might like to do an episode of the show about it. Email us, coolparts at additivemanufacturing.media. If you like the show, we hope you'll subscribe. You can find all of the episodes at the Additive Manufacturing Media YouTube channel or at thecoolpartshow.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you to our sponsor, Carpenter Additive. Listen to Additive Manufacturing podcasts, attend webinars, and learn more at carpenteradditive.com. Additive.